Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in again. It is the end of a long day. I'm sitting here in my hotel room on the road painting a ceiling here in LA area in Hawthorne. So it's been really cool seeing the way clouds look on this kind of constructed ceiling, these archways. My client, Nikki, she really likes this eclectic way of, of decorating. So, as, you know, I've never seen anything like this place, but it's super cool. There's these brick columns and then all these archways over the top of them. I wouldn't have predicted the way it looks to have all of my clouds on this kind of a surface. So I stand on one side, I see all of the arches that bend this way. I stand on the other side, I see all the arches that bend this way. It's a different image from either side. Then it also bends the image because of all of those arched shapes. It makes the picture look cool. I wouldn't have predicted such a good outcome for the artwork of the clouds. I, I would have expected it to distort the image in kind of a negative way, an unattractive way, but I'm pleasantly surprised at the way it looks. So that's been a cool cool thing to see. It's a construction zone still, so I'm, I'm working around lots of cords and tools and the other workers are in there getting the painting done ahead of me. Good guys, good guys to work with here. It's a friendly area. Hawthorne is surprisingly friendly. I've been pleasantly surprised. The people at the stores, all the clerks that are nice, everybody's up for conversation. So the plan is to do all of those archways, I think there's seven of them total, and then to paint some clouds on the adjacent hallways that, that connect to that area. So I'm making good progress, but I'm tired. I spent a lot of time with my brother, Ben, who does all of this cool editing and film work, you know, and, and so while I'm here in his town, he lives here in LA, he came over and did some footage on the job. So any other footage in this video that looks especially better than what you're used to seeing, that's because Ben was involved and it wasn't just me pulling out the tripod or holding the camera, you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I had a good time catching up. Ben and his camera, you know, there's all these slow motion video cameras on phones now. I'm still using this thing. Man, I'm telling you, phones are not what they used to be. I just like being able to hang up on somebody or answer, you know, it's cool. I feel like it's just really cool when you can, when you can answer like that. You just flip it open. Who is it? Hello, this is Joe. It's Tuesday morning right now and so I got here yesterday. This is second day on the job. Yesterday we put these clouds on this. I used eggshell paint, which is a little bit on the shiny side compared to a flat. I don't know why I did that. I always like to do ceilings and flat for this exact reason. The reflection that you're looking at, that's fine if that's not avoidable, but it is easily avoidable by just using flat paint, so. I'm gonna have to redo that right there. But now is the time to get the redos out of the way because I still have to go all the way down this hallway. This is my new and improved rig for saving my neck. That is a big deal. If you lose your flexibility, your energy level, your mobility, and, and you get all sore, the job's over. So I've got my t-shirt folded up in, into a neck pillow. I've got this infinity scarf. I just learned yesterday, my wife told me, oh yeah, you bought an infinity scarf. This was a little bit too big, so I just tied a loop in it. I take that loop, and then I just tucked it through itself and made a, a like a slip knot like that, you know, just like the heavy metal band, a slip knot. And then I tied the rag into that knot so that I've just got a cross strap. And here's what I'm gonna do. I put this on so that the knot is on the side. And this is a big improvement from the first video I did of this thing because this allows it to be a lot looser at the beginning. This is the part that's gonna not let my skull dig a hole in my spine when I look up for hours. This is not the same thing as like a collarbone support, a clavicle support, whatever you call those, because those pull right on your shoulders and go right in your armpits. And if you do this all day with that, it's gonna leave rashes like this, you know. I got a little bit of red left from the first day. So I put this rag around and I'm gonna tie that to tighten it across the front and it pulls it off of my armpits just like a big old heavy backpack that has, you know, you wear a big backpack when you're going to hike and you can rest your head on that thing, but this is without the weight and the bulk. So I can do this all day long, no soreness, none. It even puts less pressure because of that pillow and this thin fabric 
less pressure on my jugular veins, which is very important when you're on a high ladder. You don't want to pass out up there. A lot of mobility in my arms, no chafing on the armpits. I don't have to, you know, roll my sleeves way up anymore and use extra soft material. This is the best development so far. I think I'm ready to prototype. Let's do some q and I'm looking at last week's video. Thank you very much, Carolyn Day, for that nice compliment. And Susan Weaver as well. Thank you for the kind words. I always appreciate the ego boosts. Round Brush Steve says, What I really want to know is how do you stay so motivated to paint? Very good question. I've completely lost my urge to paint or draw and don't get half as much satisfaction. Is there a cure? <laughs> If there is, I wouldn't know it. But for me, what really made the difference, because I did experience that exact thing before I was doing my paintings for something besides the painting. When it became about the people that I was painting for, then I was able to have a reason to finish projects. And it wasn't especially fun finishing projects, especially when I didn't feel like I was doing a good job wasn't confident the outcome would be good, but I had people that I didn't want to let down, you know, and that kept me motivated. I, I needed to pay bills, right? That's, I mean, money is a, is a legit motivator. Now, my motivation is trying to generate helpful content. So earlier on, my motivation was the thrill of discovery. I can get good at this. I can understand things. I'm learning new things. This is awesome. It's like my mind is opened and I'm seeing things I never knew before. That's how I felt all the time. You know, it's like, wow, I didn't even know that I would understand these things. And it's all just coming to me. It's a big thrill, right? And you know, when I started putting things on YouTube and getting a lot of people saying, hey, thanks for doing this, this is helpful. I realized that people appreciated help a lot more than just a show off. That became my motivation that, that is still today, being able to generate helpful content. I feel like I'm the guy that's trying to create the tools for people to have the joy of being more able. For me, that's what keeps me going. So, But here's something that I'm curious about. Why is it important to paint or draw? Hey, you know, is there something else that really drives you. I have found that the secret to enjoyment is not in what I'm doing, but having a good reason. Gamma says, greetings from Bosnia. All right, cool. Your tutorials have helped me a lot in understanding so I can paint better. Thank you very much for that encouraging report. I'm very happy to hear that. Uodeo3 says, have you ever considered being a concept artist for the video game industry? You have more than talent for it. You have the gift of creating creatures and worlds. Sorry for my English. Perfect English, as far as I can tell. Thank you for the shout out from Brazil. All right, we got Brazil tuning in too. That's exciting. When I was younger, I really imagined trying to go that way, actually designing creatures and world. Yeah, just like you said. I think now I've just found such satisfaction in the more independent research of things. I would feel confined if I took any particular job that was working for a larger company. You know, I would feel restricted because because I wouldn't just be using all of my time just to research the unanswered questions. That's really what I'm all about now, is just researching the unanswered questions. Floyd, Floyd S. says, Have you ever tried painting with spray can? Not in the way of graffiti art. You know, I did do like a graffiti mural at River Valley High School over in Needles, Bullhead City area. I think I mentioned this on, on a recent video. It was with an air compressor and a cup, you know, not a, not a spray can. So it wasn't like a real graffiti art. I really have respect for that ability. Man, there are some amazing graffiti murals. I am so impressed with what people can do with the spray can. That is not on my skill set at this time. <laughs> It'd be fun to try it for sure. You know what would be fun is, you know, if I ever get a chance to tour and, and visit, you know, a lot of different places and I'm going to have to just get somebody who's really good to show me some tricks, see if I can try my hand at it. Ah, ah. I don't know how else to say that name. I'm finally watching your videos, Joe. Hey, all right. It's good to have you tuning in. Thank you very much. Totally not Lily for the nice compliment. Miss Flara says, I love how you back up your techniques with knowledge of a why. I was always the argumentative one growing up. And I think it was frustrating both to my brothers and my parents. I always needed the answer why and I lacked the respect to just 
let somebody say their piece and leave it there. You know, if I didn't agree, I had to voice it. I thought that I was entitled to having my voice be heard, you know. So I would always argue with mom and dad. I'd always argue with brothers. I'd always argue just to argue. As it turns out, that's not always beneficial to tell people they're wrong just because you think they are. <laughs> That was a bad habit. But it was the same urge to have answers. You know, like, I can't just agree with this. I can't just say okay if I don't understand the why. I always needed the why. So, you know, the answer why is was so important to me that I decided, you know, I I need to try to give that when I when I make a statement, I need to try to give the explanation why. So it became a passion of mine to try to get questions answered, get the why answered. You know, we're in LA, so I got all kinds of noise coming through the window. Zach White has a great idea. What do you think of adding large refractive and clear crystals implemented into the cave setting? Hey, I think that's a great idea. When I'm done with this cloud project, I'm gonna see what I can do about doing that exact thing. I've never really tried my hand at painting crystals, but I remember somebody else asking once upon a time how I would paint something like an emerald or something. I should do that. And that would be a good opportunity to present an alternative way of thinking about light, you know, and the way it bends through objects. You know, I just feel like the explanations that are there right now make it feel complicated but as far as i can tell the same thing is happening every time when light hits something it either goes through some percentage of the light goes through and changes direction or doesn't change direction and then some bounces off and if it bounces off it you know it, it skips like a rock off water and maybe i'm oversimplifying but you know refraction and and reflection and the other fancy words that i don't even know i just feel like it's all always the same thing you know it bends around and so uh, maybe I'll try to get into that with that. That's a good idea. Nilu Basir says, I'm not passionate about anything else like I am toward painting. Although I'm a beginner, I think I want to make it work. Do you think I can earn a decent amount so I can pay off some liabilities? <laughs> no idea. Life is not so uh, fair that you can say, hey, if you work, you're gonna make it. I don't know. What else do you have in life besides doing what you're passionate about, you know? Was, if you're passionate about it, do it. I, I don't even understand why else why else you do live except to pursue the things you're passionate about. That's why I do it. You know, there's there's never promise of success. It wouldn't really be success if there was promise of it. It would just be, you know, programmed outcome. You know, if you're asking me, go for it. Jump off the cliff, take risks. I don't know if you can make it, no idea. I definitely hope you do though. And I'm always here to say, keep up the good work. We like to give people screen time on these videos. And so if you've got a project that you're working on, post it at Mural Joe and we'll be scouting for it. Well, I sure do appreciate you tuning in. If you like what you saw, then I would sure love to show you more next week. So uh, definitely subscribe. I do sell videos as well, instructional content that's lengthier with more description in it. And so you can look at MuralJoe.com if you're interested in that. I'm gonna turn in for the night. I'm feeling very tired, but it's a good tired. You know, it's, it's nice to actually be a muralist and paint a mural on a wall. <laughs> I spent all, all this time in the studio now painting small pictures. I think people that come and see my channel are like, why do you call yourself Mural Joe when you're just doing little paintings? So hey, this is helping me to uh, legitimize the name Mural Joe.